Hi guys, my name is Andrew. I'm gearing up to take the CCMP route exam pretty soon. I've been working on NetFlow recently. It's something that is in a, the exam objectives, and in my opinion, it is not very well covered in the Cisco Press books. Uh, so I've been trying to learn it and uh, using other tools. Uh, this PDF comes from uh, some Cisco documentation that I found online. Uh, I'd really recommend taking a look at it. It's from a 400 page PDF on uh, going over NetFlow. Uh, it's not actually that long to read because a lot of the pages are just indexing and stuff. Uh, but here I've selected about 10 pages that I thought were important that had some maybe some little trivia tidbits that might be useful to know. Uh, so we'll go over that. And then I'd like to show you NetFlow on the router, how to configure it and how to use show commands to take a look at the uh, NetFlow statistics in real time. And we'll do that on GNS3. So let's get started with what NetFlow is. So NetFlow is a Cisco application that provides statistics on packets flowing through the router routing devices on the network. Um, it is used for network accounting and security. And NetFlow identifies packet flows for both ingress and egress IP packets. So basically what we've learned so far is it is some Cisco application that provides statistics. So we'll see soon what exact statistics will be provided with and on packets flowing through the routing devices and packet flows are identified for both ingress and egress. So ingress and egress referring obviously to packets going into an interface or going out of an interface. Very shortly we'll learn what a packet flow really is, what that means and how NetFlow defines a packet flow. Uh, so moving on, it does not involve any connection setup protocol. Uh, so basically what it's saying is that there's no packets that need to be exchanged such as think of like NTP. Um, there's no setup protocol that needs to go on between routers. Uh, NetFlow is something that is going to be local to each router and all other devices in the network will not know about it. So NetFlow is transparent um, in that sense. So here are some things I think might be good to know. Um, NetFlow does not support ATM LAN emulation, does not support ISL slash VLAN, ATM, or frame relay interfaces when more than one input ACL is used on the interface. So now we've, we know what NetFlow is. We have an idea of it providing statistics on packet flows, ingress and egress. So let's learn what exactly a, a flow is according to NetFlow. So a NetFlow network flow is defined as a unidirectional stream of packets between a given source and destination. So we've got these seven key fields here that are used to identify a flow. We've got a source and destination IP address along with the source and destination port number. We've got the layer three protocol type, the type of service, and the input logical interface, which is the interface on the routing device. So let's say you've got a router performing NetFlow. You've got two devices on either side of it. Uh, they're pinging each other. And they ping each other continuously. So you've got one flow from that, right? You've got a uh, everything's the same source, destination IP, port number, layer three protocol type. So let's say now you uh, change the ping to a different source port number now. What would that look like on the uh, the router performing an flow? What you'd see is you'd see a completely new flow uh, being defined and collected, uh, the statistics collected on it. So you'd see the first flow with all the pings from that and a brand new flow because that one source port number got changed. So it's important to know that these seven fields are always this is what defines a flow. So if you ever change any one field in here, NetFlow is going to see that as a completely different flow. 
So let's go over some of the different versions for NetFlow. So NetFlow exports data in UDP datagrams. I think that might be good to know. And um, there's five different formats that are used. Nine, eight, seven, five, and one. Uh, what's interesting is that versions two through four and six were either not released or not supported. Um, what I've found, at least on my device, is what's, I think, the only versions available to me to uh, configure are just version 9, 5, and 1. Uh, it looks like version 7 is supported only on certain platforms. Version 8 only supports uh, export from aggregation cache. So version 9 is an important uh, version because it is the latest and newest version, but also it is very different from the others because it is the only one that offers a template-based uh, record format. So basically what this template does, uh, show you here on the PDF, templates provide a mean of extending the record format, a feature that should allow future enhancements to NetFlow services without requiring concurrent changes to the basic flow record format. So basically it's kind of a future-proof version because um, it allows them to always extend it and adapt it to uh, allow enhancements to it without having to create a, a brand new version. Um, this, this format also accommodates um, some new, sub newly supported technologies with multicast, MPLS, and BGP Next Top. Um, I thought this was interesting. This talks about NetFlow MIBS. So there's a few different ways to get the statistic information from NetFlow. You can see it directly on the router device. There's a show command that we'll use coming up here shortly to take a look at that. You can also export the NetFlow data to a NetFlow collector. You use uh, some commands to configure the uh, point to the, ex the collector's IP address and port. Um, you will configure which version you're wanting to uh, export and um, you can use the collector program to look at the, uh, the data. Another way is with SNMP. So here this talks about how uh, there's a NetFlow MIB um, and you can use get and set commands to, uh, to access the, uh, the NetFlow information in, in real time, which I thought was, was interesting. There's also a, a top talkers feature this discusses, which we'll look at more a little bit later. So let's go over egress NetFlow, something I found really interesting. Egress NetFlow is something new to version 9. So let's say you're running version 5 or something. Version 9 hadn't come out yet. There was actually a way for the NetFlow collector program to show you egress traffic. Well, how does, how does that work? How can the collector show you egress traffic when there's not even an option to uh, configure egress NetFlow on your device? All you can configure is ingress traffic. Well, the way the collector did this is only in a specific case. When all of your interfaces on the uh, device were all performing uh, NetFlow ingress accounting. So when the collector got all of that ingress information and it has the information for every single interface on that router it can actually work out what the egress traffic would be it can because it's seeing every single packet that goes in it's seeing that that's going to go out another interface and it's monitoring that for all interfaces so it can actually work out the egress traffic for you but with version 9 now you've actually got the specific option to uh, monitor egress traffic just on single devices instead of needing to monitor egress traffic on all of your, your interfaces. Um, something interesting to note is that locally generated traffic uh, is not counted as flow traffic on uh, e egress accounting. Um, so let's go over a little bit more of some little tidbits about version 9. What's interesting is that it's not backward compatible Actually, that might be kind of intuitive. I mean, it's a it's a brand new format. It's a template-based format, so that probably explains why it's not better backward compatible with version five or eight. Um, 
the uh, export bandwidth use increases for version 9. This might also be intuitive because you've got the template flow sets um, versus version 5. So you've, you've seen an increase in bandwidth usage. Um, another thing that's interesting is performance impact. You might think, well, version 9 is so much newer. I'm sure that if I'm using the newer version, uh, I'm getting better performance. Well, actually, version 9 slightly decreases overall performance because of the, uh, the extra processing that the, the template flow sets require. So I thought that was interesting. Um, this is just going over how uh, version 9 is flexible and extensible format, which we've already covered. Um, it's talking about the MIB a little bit more and get and set commands, which we covered. And then here's some information about top talkers. We'll see on the, the device that it's a, an option to configure. Uh, the top talkers uh, feature um, can show you the flows that are generating the heaviest system traffic. And you can sort this by either the total number of packets or the total number of bytes. So we've learned about what NetFlow is, uh, some of the little trivia knowledge about the different versions, um, some of the restrictions with NetFlow. So now let's get into GNS3 and we'll uh, do a simple configuration of NetFlow. We'll use some so show commands to take a look at the uh, statistics and see what else, what other show commands are available to us to see what else we can learn about NetFlow on the, the device.